Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the Brownstone Independent School District Board of Trustees board meeting. Today is December 6th. It is now 530. I'd like for everyone to please rise for a moment of silence. Dr. Saavedra, could you please lead us to the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and divisible. We now go to item number four for roll call. Please let the records reflect that all board members are now present. Item number five, recommend approving the agenda of the regular board meeting of December the 6th with any corrections or deletions. Dr. Montoya. Uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board, members of the audience, uh, on section 10A conference presentation, page 59A will be added to agenda backup on Section 13A, Personnel Matters, Item 26, pages 259 to 261 will be deleted from Agenda Backup. And Item 28, pages 274 to 276 will be deleted from Agenda Backup. And that, that is all. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Ms. Pena. Do I have a second? Second by Dr. Saavedra. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. We now go to item number six, recommend approving the minutes of the regular board meeting of October the 4th, 2011 with any corrections or deletions. Dr. Montoya? As stated, ma'am. Do I have a motion from my colleagues? Madam President. Go ahead, sir. If there are no objections for the board, I'd like to move to approve item six, seven, and eight. Motion made by Dr. Scoyle. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Peña. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. We now go to recommend approving of the consent agenda. The board has agreed to discuss the following items. All items, all of the items below that are called, that are not called out will be approved by consent. My colleagues have agreed to discuss the following items. Item number four, number 13, 16, 18, 23, 26, 28. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you're going a little fast. Thank you. 18, 23, 26, 28. They were they, they were deleted. Pulled. 28, 29. Yes. So we don't. 28, 29 were deleted. Yes. No, there's only three pages, not the items. Not the items, That's just the, the three pages. Okay, Both so yes, we're, so leave them circles. Okay, so let me go back again. Item number 23, item number 26. There were only pages that were deleted from item number 28. We'll be discussed number 29. And 27 also, ma'am. Number 27, 30, 31, 31, and 32A. Oh, Ms. Presa, so you said 29 yes, also, right? Yes, I, much. Okay, for verification, you. let me run by it to, to you one more time. All of personnel. All of personnel, exactly. So it's 13, 16, 18, 23, and 26 through 31, and then 32A. Ma ma Madam President. Go ahead, sir. I I'd like to circle item 9 just for the sake of uh, ex explaining a little bit the biography. That's yes. the only reason. Okay. Yes. That's a good idea. Also, could you, uh, we'll circle number 9. And 11. And number 11, 11. as well. Oh. oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> this grows. that one and um, I'd like to also see if we could change the uh, order of the day item number four to be moved to right in front of recognition of Hannah High School girls chess winners number four. Number one, to, item number four to be number one okay and then uh, let me see no I don't think they're here yet you're here? 
No, that, that's for the item number four. So I guess we'll hold off on item number four. And uh, we'll wait on that because the presenter's not here yet. Okay. So I guess we'll just, we'll give it as is. Keep it as is. Okay. Do I have a motion for? Second. Motion by Dr. Saveda. Second by Ms. Benny. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We now go to uh, superintendent's report. Conference presentation, recognition of Hannah High School girls chess winners. Dr. Montoya. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, on November 17th, uh, there was a group uh, recognized of the Texas Girls Scholastic Chess Comp Competition held in Corpus Christi in October. So, so therefore, this evening, we'd like to directly uh, recognize them. This was the first team group. Uh, and uh, Ms. Monfiles, if you'd like to go ahead and present, please. Madam President, Dr. Montoya, members of the board, this particular group of Hannah students was not able to join us on November 17th because they were participating in another competition. So we wanted to bring them forward tonight. Mr. Rojas is our uh, coordinator for UIL and chess. Madam President, Superintendent, members of the board, it's my pleasure to introduce the high school winners of the Texas Girls Scholastic Chess Championship that took place in Corpus on October 15th and 16th. The high school winners, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Hannah High School was the, was the first place team at the competition. Uh, the team included Ivana Santos, Kathleen Preble, and Emily Rodriguez. Ivana Santos won the first place in individual. She's now the two-time high school girls state championship for, Hannah, for Homer Hannah High School. Kathleen Preble also took third place in individual. We have all three of them here to be recognized today. One of these to now. There you go. I'm very proud of you guys. Okay. <laughs> Their coaches are Nelda Rogers and Rebecca Preble, the principal, Teresa Renko. Alacron, sorry. Taller, so we'll have to stand on our toes. Miss <laughs> Presas, if I may. Go ahead, Miss Bain. I want to uh, thank Mrs. Preble and Mrs. Rogers. I know they've been doing this for a long time. Very proud of these ladies. I've known Ivana since. Uh, I think she was in third grade, and look at you now, heading off to college. I'm very, very proud of everything you guys have accomplished, and I wish you the best, and I'm looking forward to you guys taking lead of this country when you guys are done with your college. So congratulations, and God bless. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. We now go to item number two, presentation by Matamoros Mayor Alfonso Sanchez Garza. Dr. Montoya. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, again, uh, we welcome the mayor from Matamoros and his people, and we turn it over to Dr. Escovedo for some comments. Thank you, Madam President, Dr. Montoya. Uh, unfortunately, the mayor, Alfonso Sanchez Garza, had a, a conflict, of last-minute conflict with, with the governor. Uh, but we're fortunate to have people representing Matamoros uh, we have uh, Mr. Cesar Noe Garza Garcia, a regidor, which is synonymous to a city councilman, city commissioner. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Marcos Cantupuga, Professor Marcos Cantupuga, who is the director of education 
of Matamoros. Uh, we have another guest, uh, Mr. Gerardo Acevedo Danache, who's the Vice President of the Matamoros Chamber of Commerce. And, and last but not least, we have Clemente Rendon, who is a chronista or a um, historian of the city of Matamoros. So gentlemen, welcome to, to our school district. And if we may, let's give them a round of applause. They would like to make a, a presentation to us today. Uh, they'd like to op uh, offer something to, to our district. Uh, so whoever is going to be the spokesperson, or if you would I'd like to go out to the microphone, uh, he, the gentleman, will speak in Spanish. I have asked him to speak uh, a little bit at a time so that I can translate for those of us that speak uh, uh, only English. And then we'll continue with the presentation. Si gustan pasar al micrófono, si gustan los, los cuatro caballeros pueden pasar, están en su casa. Y nomás le, le reitero que por favor hable un poco a la vez y, y tenga una pausa para yo poder traducir uh, un poco a la vez. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Buenas tardes. Good, good afternoon. Vengo con la representación del ingeniero Víctor Alfonso Sánchez Garza. I'm here in representation of the engineer Victor Sanchez Garza. Presidente Municipal de Matamoros. Municipal President of Matamoros, Mayor of Matamoros. A entregar a esta honorable comisión que ustedes presiden. To, to uh, issue to this honorable uh, board. Un libro sobre el fuerte Casamata de nuestra ciudad. A, a book on, uh, on our city. Y en el que se sintetizan todas las... Luchas. One in which we uh, describe the, the synthesis of our battles. Y ahí se consagra parte muy importante de la historia de nuestro pueblo. In which it depicts uh, the very important history of our, of our city. Era deseo del señor presidente estar en esta tarde con ustedes. It was the wish of our mayor to be here with, with you all this evening. Pero por cuestiones de agenda y dado que... El próximo viernes es el informe de nuestro señor presidente. But due to a conflict and plus uh, next Friday is uh, the, the, the state of the city address. Y mañana el señor gobernador realiza una gira por nuestro municipio. And tomorrow our, our governor will be in our city. No le fue posible estar en esta tarde con ustedes. It was not possible for him to be with us this evening. Quiero, antes de hacer entrega de este presente que envía el señor presidente con todo cariño. Before I make the presentation of the gift that our mayor sends with all his uh, care. Poner a nuestra, o a vuestra disposición, el deseo de tener un intercambio de razones respetuosas y cordiales. I would like to put uh, before you... Uh, our desire to have a, a continue our collaboration a través de acciones de trabajo que pudieran darse through any type of uh, interchange of, uh, of uh, tasks or work that we that may present or that may be presented con el trato diario que pudiera haber entre nuestros dos pueblos on a, on a daily basis between our both of our communities quiero por último nada más decirles Uh, lastly, I would like to tell you que me voy impresionado del buen gusto de quien decoró este escenario con uh -huh. las noches. <laughs> that I am impressed with whoever was in charge of decoration <laughs> of this boardroom. Es una, <laughs> muchas gracias a ustedes y es deseo si no tienes alguna cosa. Que Thank you all very much and I'll see if anyone else would like to say entregar anything. El libro y vamos a darle I'll, la palabra a Clemente, que es historiador de Matamor, to Clemente Rendón, para que nos dé su mensaje. For his, uh, few words. Muchas gracias, es un gusto estar esta tarde con ustedes. Thank aquí you very much, it's my pleasure to be with you this evening. Quiero recordar que Matamoros es una ciudad más vieja que Brownsville, nada más 74 años mayor. I would like to <laughs> say that Matamoros is uh, an older city than Brownsville, about 74 years older. Fundada en 1774 con el nombre San Juan de los Esteros. 
founded in 1774 with the name of San Juan de los Esteros. Y 19 años después le cambiaron el nombre y le pusieron Nuestra Señora del Refugio de los Esteros. And 19 years later the name was changed into Nuestra Señora, the name that he just said. Pero, <laughs> Of the ponds. <laughs> pero, pero entonces y ahora abreviamos y le decíamos nada más el refugio. Now we just simply call it the refuge. Pero a partir de 1826 recibió el nombre de el héroe en cuyo honor lleva el nombre, Mariano Matamoros. But in 1826 the name was changed to Mariano Matamoros a after partir, our hero. A partir de 1848 con los tratados de Guadalupe Hidalgo. After 1848, after the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, gente que vivía en Matamoros como Charles Stillman cruzaron el río a fundar Brownsville. People that lived in Matamoros, such as Charles Stillman, crossed the river to found the city of Brownsville. Y aunque oficialmente somos hermanos desde 1996 o ciudades hermanas, and even though officially we're only sister cities since 1996 through the agreement of sister cities, cities en, en realidad hemos sido hermanos de toda la vida. In reality, we've been sister cities of our entire life or existence. Y por eso, con mucho gusto, estamos esta tarde mm -hmm. y les dejo un libro. And we are therefore uh, very honored and happy to be here this evening, and we would like to present you with a book. Gracias. So, so if the, thank you. So if the board would like to come down and, and, and receive this book and take a picture. <laughs> Perdón, quería decir unas palabras. Sí, nada más para ratificar el like compromiso firme de nuestro presidente municipal, el ingeniero Víctor Alfonso Sánchez Garza. I would like to reiterate our firm commitment uh, to you on behalf of our mayor, Alfonso Sánchez Garza. Para fortalecer las relaciones culturales en estas dos ciudades hermanas. To strengthen the intercultural relationships between these two sister cities. Y que reciban a nombre de nuestro presidente municipal. And on behalf of our mayor, el agradecimiento a esta invitación para participar. Re receive the, our gratitude uh, to come and participate in your meeting. En una forma conjunta. In, in, a, in a very uh, 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 cordial manner. En el crecimiento de estas dos ciudades. Gracias. Thinking of the growth of both cities. Thank you.
Este... Queremos... Queremos agradecerles por haber venido a, a nuestra junta hoy. Este es un gran placer tenerlos aquí con nosotros. Como siempre, somos, eh, estamos, como quien dice, somos una comunidad muy, muy unida junto a Matamoros. Este, y, y les deseo lo, la mejor suerte a Matamoros con lo que está pasando. Les deseo con todo corazón que salgan adelante. Lo han hecho anteriormente y los, los, irán, los irán siendo. Este... Como siempre, les quiero agradecer de nuevo. Las puertas siempre están abiertas el día que ustedes quieran venir, hablar con la administración. Aquí es el edificio de ustedes para que ustedes puedan venir. Y, 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 y pues en lo que podamos ayudarles o lo que ustedes necesiten, bienvenidos. Gracias. Yo también me gustaría darle las gracias. Información que no, uno no sabe. En veces cuando uno habla de la historia, de cómo venimos a ser uh, y estar donde estamos, trae los, los pueblos más unidos, porque se dan cuenta que en realidad hacemos los mismos. Y siempre es, seremos los mismos, seguiremos siendo los mismos. Y cuando uno se entiende, entonces ya puede entender de dónde vienen las cosas, por qué pasa lo que pasa. Y nos deseamos lo mejor para salir adelante. Y Dios los bendiga y los proteja y que salgan siempre adelante con ustedes al lado de nosotros. Gracias. We now go to item number three, recognition of Porter High School Recycling Program and sponsored by Ms. Patty O'Bell. Dr. Montoya. Madam President, members of the board, uh, the Porter group of students took it upon themselves to see if they could improve our community by collecting plastic bottles and recycling and seeing what they could do. And they did a very, very effective job helping us in the community. Uh, their motto was no bottle left behind, and so they tried to <laughs> to use that, and, and, and I think it was, uh, so uh, I don't know, I believe Miss uh, O'Bell, are you here in the audience? If you'd step up, please, come to the, uh, come to the podium, please. Good afternoon, members of the board. I'm here to... Um, very excited to celebrate our, um, we, declared, we were declared winners of the Recycling Challenge. This is the second year in a row uh, the team gets recognized. Uh, not only did we win, but they actually established, the city established a second competition to give a chance to another team to be able to fulfill and join in the celebration. Well, Porter High School took the second challenge also <laughs> by, by collecting over 300 tennis shoes for the reuse of shoe that will be turned into Nike and we collected the shoes. They didn't have to be pairs. It was a community effort. Uh, everybody helped out. Some of the, some of the other schools, uh, like Oliveira Middle, Middle School, Gonzalez Elementary, also joined in our forces. And uh, uh, some of the students that have parents at other schools, they brought in their bottles. We had a humongous amount of bottles. It was a fun experience. It was a learning experience for the kids. They've done it for the second year. They really enjoy what they do, and of course, it's all for the planet. So we're here. Uh, uh, and we appreciate your, the recognition, and we appreciate all the help from the community, everybody that helped us out to go green. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. O'Bell. Also, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to recognize your, your team of students, Ms. O'Bell. So if they could please stand and, and, and come to the front. Um, I know that you, you people worked very hard during the football season. Uh, you made sure that I, I dropped off my bottle, water, empty in the little <laughs> bin there. But uh, we'll start with the Abel Castro, Jesus Franco, Jose Navarro, Felicia Martinez, Eliseo Espinosa, Robert Lopez, Alejandro Garcia, Saul Longoria, Jackie Gutierrez, Jose Castillo. And for the many faculty and parents that also helped out, Ms. Zimmer, Mr. Martinez, Mr. Limas, Ms. Bowman, and others who are not here, we'd like to thank you for all the participation because trust me, with the, uh, with the support of the adults, these students can succeed and go above and beyond. All they need is that, that, that us adults are always there for them and, and, and be able to support them all the way. Congratulations on your second year as winners of the recycling.
congratulations. Thank you very much for what you do. Thank you very much. Congratulations. What you're going for us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I can humiliate or humor, hurt or heal the student. I choose to make my weather sunny and bright, be joyous, inspirational, humorous, and healing to my students always. I love my job. And I want you to know that that is what makes this district so unique. So you should be very proud of the staff that we have. By the way, this staff member is from Oliveda Middle School. And that principal should be very proud of that teacher. And I know that throughout the district we have many teachers like that. So we need to continue to stay focused and, and do what we got to do and make sure that we have the people that can be in a classroom that will do what's best for our, te for our students. Thank you so very much. We now go to presentation on credit hours for Board, tr board of Trustees. And I'd like to tell the public that the all of the board members have attended trainings. And we'll start with Orlando Aguilar. He served on the board as of 2004. He's got 195.25 hours, which in this, with our training, it exceeds our training. We go to Joe Colunga. He's been serving on the board since 1995. His total hours are 181.25. He's also exceeded his required training. Dr. Enrique Escobedo, he has been serving on the board since 2003. He has 229.75 hours. He has also exceeded his training. Lucy Longoria, he's, she served as of 2010. She has exceeded her hours with 52 hours as well. Ms. Minerva Peña, she served on the board as of 2008. She has 101.25 hours, which also has exceeded her required training. Kathy Presas Garcia, I have served on the board as of 2008. My hours of training are 146.50. I have also exceeded my required training. Dr. Cristina Saavedra, who has served on the board as of 2010, she has 74.30 hours. She has also exceeded her training. We now go to item number four. Do you want to, uh, or is anybody here that we could do the presentation? This was really nice. You need to keep. So, people are waiting. To, oh, at six. Let me go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and take a break. Hmm. Oh, we can go ahead and break out. So we'll now go to presentation of second annual Posada de los Niños by Jimmy Gonzalez y Grupo Mas. If uh, I, we have Mr. Arambula. Good evening, uh, uh, Board President uh, Garcia, Superintendent Montoya. Um, uh, here tonight, uh, wanting to give you some information on how the uh, Posada de los Niños has uh, come about. Initially, uh, Jimmy Gonzalez uh, with Grupo Mas and his sister Cindy approached me to say that they had last year they had done the first annual Posada de los Niños at, at a park here in Brownsville for Christmas and and it was successful to a certain extent except that they were needing some help to try to make it a big success this year and hopefully years after this. Uh, what I initially did because it was uh, such a big thing that, that he was talking about about trying to get toys to give to the the homeless and and the uh, needy children in our community uh, the first thing that I did is I contacted uh, some of the uh, city commissioners and I communicated with uh, city commissioner Melissa Zamora who immediately embraced the the idea and the concept and brought folks from the city of Brownsville together uh, then simultaneously we were working with uh, Miss Rosie Peña and her husband Julian Peña to try to see if we can make something happen. Well, through uh, Ms. Pena's efforts in here, working here at BISD, you know, she communicated with uh, uh, the folks here, and uh, Dr. Montoya embraced the idea and said that we needed to 
try to do something and help out the community because it involves a lot of the children for Brownsville Independent School District, especially we have a lot of homeless kids here. So it, it became something that is evolving into a big thing at this point. And uh, uh, Mr. Jimmy Gonzalez is supposed to be here with us, but uh, he had uh, trouble getting here with transportation. He's just coming in here right now. Here. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> uh, I wanted to give a special thanks to uh, uh, County Commissioner Sofia Benavides, who has donated 250 plus uh, pajamas for the children. Commissioner Benavides uh, couldn't be here with us tonight because she's out of town, but wanted to challenge all the elected officials to step up and give uh, on December the 18th. Uh, additionally, a special thank you to City Commissioner Melissa Samora for getting the City of Brownsville to participate. Also, a special thank you to City Parks Manager Chris Patterson and Ms. Shannon Guerrero, who is with us here tonight. A uh, special thank you to BISD Board President uh, Catalina Presas and our Superintendent uh, Dr. Carl Montoya for assisting and helping us in, and making this a reality. Uh, a special thank you also to Ms. Rosario Peña and her husband, Julian Peña, for their endless support. And, of course, Ms. Diana Clive, who's been working with us endlessly with the, uh, with the project as well. Uh, the other special thanks that we need to make sure we, we account for is the Lord of Divine Mercy Parish and Mr. Julian Peña, who are, are assisting us in this uh, endeavor. And the volunteers that will be assisting on December the 18th, uh, at this point we have the Southmost Lions Club, Mr. Chay Olial, who is going to be uh, providing all the, uh, the manpower. We have about 10 or 12 individuals that will be uh, helping us. But we are asking for more people and more volunteers to come on December the 18th to help us distribute uh, the toys to those needy children. Uh, finally, I would just like to see if uh, our uh, friend Jimmy Gonzalez could say a couple of words about uh, how he started this project and what he feels about it. I know that they're, they're going to give him a microphone to say something. Yeah, I got one. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm here a little late. I just woke up. <laughs> no, we've been on the road, and uh, I do this everywhere. You know, uh, we do it in Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, West Texas, Lubbock, uh, uh, Laredo. We've done it in Midland, Odessa. And I do this for the children everywhere, and I always wanted to do it in Brownsville. So we did one last year at the Ringo Park, and uh, this, this time I wanted to do it bigger. I had a lot of artists behind me that uh, want to come in and, and donate their time to, uh, to do a lot for our kids. There's a lot of kids here that I see when I'm going everywhere that are very needy children and they're not as fortunate as, as many of us are. So I, I wanted to do this so we could gather the more toys, the better for me. That's very important to me, as many toys as we can get. Last year we ran out of toys and uh, in the middle of the concert, I was putting, uh, sending people to go get toys at Walgreens because we had like, oh my God, we had like about 2,000 little kids. And uh, that's what, what was main concern that I did, didn't want to run out of toys. And uh, I gathered uh, together to talk to Martin and Rosario and they created a team uh, with uh, BISD and the uh, city of Brownsville. And uh, I said, wow, this is gonna be a lot better. So hopefully we, we, we're, I'm looking for something really good and big, and, and it's getting bigger. It's kind of like a short time already. We're like about 10 days or two weeks prior to the 18th, but hopefully with God's blessings and God's willing, to, uh, we'll be able to, to come through. And like I said, uh, this is my second annual, and uh, uh, if I could do more for the city of Brunswick, especially the kids, there's a lot of poor children here, and uh, uh, if I could do this more often or whatever I have to do to to take care of the little kids, uh, it's my pleasure to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Uh, now, Ms. Uh, Board President, uh, Mr. Julian Peña wants to say a couple of words. Go Thank ahead. You. Good evening, Madam President, uh, Dr. Montoya, board members. On behalf of the Paris of Lord of Divine Mercy and Dr. Rodo, uh, uh, Father, Rodolfo Franco and the parish community, we would uh, truly appreciate the opportunity of giving us the participation in this community 
and as well as bringing the message of hope to our kids. We're, we're the youngest parish in the Diocese of Brownsville, and we're extremely excited to be able to assist this normal effort uh, started by Mr. Jimmy Gonzalez in Mass, and uh, we're looking for monetary donations. Of course, the more we have, the more we can give. Um, I want to thank you once again, and have a nice holidays. Thank you. Good evening, board. Uh, my name is Edward Saldiva. I'm the uh, event coordinator, and I'm here to uh, say thank you for this opportunity uh, to organize an event for our children, uh, especially the most neediest that we have here on BISD. Um, through the uh, Youth Connect program with Diana, we've actually trying to, uh, uh, to target our most neediest for this uh, event. Uh, Jimmy Gonzalez was gracious enough last year to, to do this, and uh, they asked, uh, uh, asked if I could help with uh, uh, some of the activity. And as a veteran, uh, I actually have a Facebook called Valley Veterans. Uh, this event is uh, on that Facebook if you want to get more information. Uh, you know, go out to Facebook, Valley Veterans, and uh, I'm here to also ask for, you know, monetary donations. Um, if uh, you guys need information on where you can get, uh, mail the checks to, uh, please uh, check us out. Uh, the other thing is, uh, as a veteran, I'd like to uh, challenge uh, uh, all our organizations, all our nonprofits to come together and uh, help uh, with this event. Uh, we have... Uh, a presentation with the uh, Knights of Columbus this afternoon I and mean, this evening to uh, solicit their activity. And if you, if any of you are members of uh, some of these nonprofit organizations or organizations that uh, are willing to help children, uh, we we really, really would appreciate your efforts to uh, get the word out to them and hopefully make this event a very successful event for our children. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank, uh, before we go to our board calendar, I'd like to thank Mr. Gonzalez for all the efforts and uh, for, for, you know, for bringing this to our community, to our children that are needed. And um, I know it's a lot of work. I've enjoyed it. I've, I've worked with all of the team. It's been, it's, it's been pretty interesting, pretty exciting. So I'm sure we're going to do very well. And let's just continue to work together and, and we'll make it happen. Thank you. Thank we you. Now go, we now go to to standing board agenda items of board calendars for Dr. Montoya. Uh, uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, before we recess for the tamalada, I'd like to just very quickly, tomorrow at 1230, there'll be an audit committee meeting here in this room. Next Tuesday at 530 will be a specially called board meeting. And also, uh, if the board approves uh, the holiday meeting on the Let's see, that would be the 20th. We hope that that is canceled because everybody's going to be on vacation during those two weeks. And uh, I close uh, with a very quick comment. Uh, we have an administrator in the audience that returned a year and a half in Afghanistan and Iraq, and he served his country well and served us. Uh, Mr. Reyes, if we could give him a, a round of applause, please. for your service. Thank you, Mr. Reyes, and welcome back to, to Brownsville and to our country. We'll now go to a 30-minute recess. We'll go now to a 30-minute recess. It is now 6.15. Questions from the audience will not be permitted during other portions of the meeting, so please let us hear from you now if you have comments to present. To have your comments heard tonight, your name and the subject matter of your comments must appear on the sign-in sheet, which is located in the rear of the meeting room. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes to complete his or her comments. With all due courtesy, I will strictly enforce the time limit. 
If a group of people want to be heard on the same topic, the board asks that they de designate a spokesperson to avoid needless repetition. The board has adopted rules to preclude the abuse of open forum by, for example, anyone uselessly repeating the same comment or complaint meeting after meeting. All participants must understand that if your comment, in my judgment, constitutes a complaint against an employee or officer, I will interrupt and ask you to step and direct you to proceed with the BISD formal grievance procedures, be the DGBA, FNG, and GF local. With those cautions in mind, we will now be glad to hear the general comments. And the first speaker for tonight was Mr. C. Fuentes, Francisco Fuentes, who has left the building. And now we go to Patrick Hammes. Mr. Hammes. Good evening, Dr. Montoya, Board President Garcia, members of the board, <clears throat> fellow employees and citizens of Brownsville. My name is Patrick Hammes, and I am speaking on the behalf of the Association of Brownsville Educators. We would like to wish all of you a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Season's greetings to the administration, the board, all employees, and all the children uh, in Brownsville, too. <clears throat> Also, thank you for the delicious tamales. Hit the spot, and I was getting a little hungry here. Uh, just basically a, a, a few little uh, things to say. We also want to congratulate uh, Porter on their uh, uh, tremendous success at, at recycling. I also would like to point out that Ms. Patty O'Bell is also our AOBE Vice President. She forgot to tell you that. We take great pride in her success, and we're glad that we were able to help Porter uh, in achieving uh, their championships. At Oliveira. It was also nice to hear from uh, the letter that Ms. Garcia wrote from a, a teacher at Oliveira. Uh, again, the Dolphins take a lot of pleasure in being recognized for good and positive things. <clears throat> We'd also like to let you know that our president, George Borrego, sends you his very best. Mr. Borrego was very ill, had to have surgery in San Antonio, had to have a leg amputated. He is now back in Brownsville. He is at the rehabilitation clinic on Alton Glor and is welcoming all visitors in room 609, preferably after 3.30, and you are free to bring gifts. <coughs> he will not object, uh, especially since it was his birthday yesterday and Christmas is coming up. George is back to handling the duties as the president. And again, the association wishes all of you a merry, very happy holidays, and season's greetings. Thank you, sir. We now go to Larry Jokel, and um, I've been asked to read a letter on his behalf um, because he would like for it to go into the minutes. Um, and his letter states as follows regarding the naming of the New Arts Center Hannah High School, and he is addressing it to the board president and board members. I am sorry that I cannot be at the meeting this evening, therefore I am asking that my letter be entered into the minutes of the meeting and further consideration given to the naming of the New Arts Center at Hannah High School. I read that the board is going to name the New Arts Center at today's meeting and I agree that Roberts Buchanan is worthy of the new building being named after him, but I also believe that the name of Robert Vizzetti is equally worthy and the name on the new building, on the name of the new building. Both of these men dedicated their lives to education, and they are equally worthy of having their names on the building. Why can't the board name the building after both of these outstanding educators? I look forward to the board rethinking the naming of the building to both names. Respectfully submitted, Larry Jokel. We now go to the fourth speaker, which is Elsa Hagen, Scale Up Project to the RTI. Ms. Hagen. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam President, members of the board, <laughs> Superintendent Montoya, and uh, faculty and staff here at <clears throat> Brownsville Independent School District. I'm Dr. Elsa Cardenas Hagen, here as the Associate Pro Research Professor for the University of Houston, Texas Institute for Measurement, Evaluation, uh, and Statistics. And I'm here to ask for your continued uh, support for the Scale Up Reading Intervention Project and your response to intervention model here in Brownsville. Scale Up is a $5 million grant that we received at the University of Houston. 
And the United States Department of Education has asked us to scale up, to expand our effective reading interventions across the United States. And lucky for us, um, I got my way and we get to start in Brownsville before we move on to other states. Here in Brownsville, <coughs> this uh, we began in October and have thus far spent about $200,000 providing teachers here with evidence-based reading programs and reading interventions as well as professional development services. We are here uh, to help you implement the response to intervention model, which is, I don't know if you know, that Brownsville was very well recognized in the state of Texas for being a leader in the implementation of this model, which will help to prevent reading disabilities among uh, struggling readers. This work can only be accomplished if you continue that multi-tiered approach. And what I'm asking you to consider is board policy, local policy that will ensure the sustainability of the progress that you have made and hopefully be a national model for response to intervention. We know that there are budget cuts uh, here in our state, in our city and in our state, but you know, having reading coaches and mentors is so helpful for the schools and those campuses to implement. By doing so, we prevent and can save millions of dollars uh, financially and also for these children who have to deal emotionally and socially with being uh, labeled and placed into special education services. Some students do need those services, but many can be prevented. So we're very excited about this work, and I ask you to continue your support Support of scale up but more importantly to continue your work and board policy for being the leaders across the nation for response to intervention thank you and happy holidays thank you miss Hagan we now proceed with consent agenda item and it'll be item number nine recommend approving the name the new high school performance arts instructional facility for Roberts B. Buchanan and um, I believe our colleagues wanted to also express to the public what uh, the background of Mr. Buchanan and uh, as an educator. Dr. Montoya. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, uh, we have Ms. Terry Alarcón, the principal. They did have a process that they used. And if you'll, Ms. Alarcón, if you'll come up to the podium with your uh, assistant and you can kind of go over the process and, and the outcome. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Montoya, Ms. Pesas Garcia, members of the board. Uh, my name is Terry Alarcon, and I'm blessed to be the principal at Hannah High School. This evening, I have Ms. Alma Ortiz, who is uh, Hannah High School's SBDM chairperson and also the subcommittee chairperson for uh, who reviewed all of the documents in reviewing everything in the naming of making a recommendation for naming of the auditorium. What process was used was the nominations all went to SBDM meeting. I'm sorry, this, this really neat music is uh, on right now. Um, SBDM met and um, we created a subcommittee and the subcommittee met on six different occasions to review each and every one of the nomination forms that were submitted. And this is the entire file of everything that was submitted. What the subcommittee did was they, first of all, reviewed and outlined all of the nominations that were submitted. We had eight names that were submitted that had one single nomination. And two of them had several nominations. The subcommittee reviewed all of them, and they used a criteria to follow in coming up with a name. And at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Alma Ortiz to go over a bit of the process that was used with the subcommittee. Thank you. Good evening. It was indeed a pleasure, uh, a distinct honor to be able to serve uh, in the advisory committee for the naming of the Fine Arts Instructional Facility Building at um, Hannah High School. And so it was, in fact, a very much uh, a deliberate process. There was substantial 
deliberation, letter reading, decision making that was involved. And the subcommittee consisted of four different faculty members. We met on six different occasions before and after school. And I just want to say um, the recommendation that we offered to the SBDM committee as a whole was unanimously approved after the recommendation was made and after even at the time uh, additional uh, consideration. Uh, we followed the criteria. There is a district guideline that we also took into account for the naming of buildings and we took into account years of service um, the, in the program at not, not just at the campuses but also at district office. We took into account also the the vast amount of community service that was um, that was involved as well after uh, the years employed at BISD and so uh, without hesitation without any reservation uh, please accept this recommendation that the SVDM committee as well as the group of faculty members at Hannah High School did um, it was a, a deliberate process like I said and one that we stand firmly behind thank you go ahead Don. Thank you, Madam President. Well, I'm, I'm very content and very happy for, for two reasons. First of all, because Hannah's finally getting the much-awaited, long-deserved auditorium. Since as far back as I can remember, you know, uh, one of our goals and priorities, one of our many priorities has been to have uh, build a, an auditorium for Hannah. Every school had one except Hannah. So finally, you know, there was we went through uh, actually multiple administrators at various levels. And the answer was always the same. You know, yes, we all concur that we need it, we want it, it's deserved. We just don't have the funding. So fortunately, now we're we're able to uh, to have uh, gotten to where we are. That's one reason. The other is that we have a name that you know Hannah wants for Hannah's Auditorium. So I'm I'm ready to to move on this item. Thank you. Go ahead, Miss Pena. And I can I concur with the the information that Doctor Escobedo has expressed right now. I'm just um, had a question or how difficult it would be to I know maybe add two names because I know that the names that were brought up in the in the beginning in the past it's they're both very prominent citizens that have contributed a lot to our students and education and I know that it's it's really difficult when you want to name a building because we have so many minds with so many people and so many names and by the time we build something we can name it takes years so I, being the letter that you read, I would not have a problem with placing both names on, on the building as opposed to just one. That's just my personal opinion. If I may add, mm -hmm. the, there was a vast difference in the numbers of service for the district, substantial difference in the year's service at the different capacities. And um, Mr. Robert Buchanan, Though I have until tonight met, I haven't introduced myself to him, I just saw him from afar. The gentleman is an iconic figure at Hannah High School. The gentleman is a legend. It was such an honor. I was moved so much in, in, lead, in reading these letters by so many prominent individuals in the community and others that are just humble in their ways of expressing their gratitude to the gentleman. I want to say that... Um, Please do not underestimate, members of the board, our integrity as faculty members in, doing, in going through this process. It is not something that should be bypassed. It is not something that should be belittled because we're in fact, in, in, in doing such, you would be compromising and dismissing the hard work that was involved that here. Was involved. So thank you for that. Thank and I you. Maybe you uh, let me address yes. uh, uh, yes. I'll, I'll, knowledge. I'll, I'll let I'll you the ahead. floor yes. to Mrs. I want to make sure that it's not misunderstood. She, the, the educator has made those statements. It is in no way, in no way intended, anything we say or do. And even let's say, at sometimes we, people come up and they, we ask them to do a project, present it to us, it doesn't get approved. It is in no way to challenge or belittle or uh, dismiss your integrity. Please understand because we're in a democracy in the United States of America where we're asked to do stuff. And please understand, I love every single educator and all your decisions. Sometimes we politely agree to disagree, and in no way will we ever do anything to intentionally hurt any of our educators. Thank you, Ms. Peña. Thank you for that. Go ahead. Madam President, I move to approve item 9. I have a motion by Dr. Escobedo. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Saavedra. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries.
Congratulations to much. Mr. Buchanan and his family. Thank you. Uh, is, is he here? Mr. Buchanan, if you could please, um, Mr. Buchanan, if you can please step up to the podium. And Mrs. Buchanan? Yes. We can have a photograph with him? I, no. <laughs> After that? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, I'm honored for your naming of the building. I'm also very humble by the fact that I was chosen over such a aust aust austere a group of people, but I think most of all I'm very proud of the fact that Hannah High School is finally yes. going to get to the final. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You know, um, Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan, um, we want you to know that that building was long due, long overdue, like uh, Dr. Scovedo said, and again, like, you know, our, our educators said, you know, all the efforts, you know, we knew that there were going to be many names out there, but it was, you know, their decision. We respect that. We support it. Uh, it's time that this district starts making the decisions either easy or hard. Sometimes we got to make hard decisions. People don't understand why, but there's always a reason why. And just, you know, understand that, that, that you deserve it. You dedicated your time, your effort, and, you know, and I'm sure that God also has a place for you upstairs because it takes great people to educate our children. Thank you so very much. Mr. Buchanan, uh, I was reading the paper, and remi uh, it reminded me when you were at Cummins Middle School, Uh, but wait, ma'am, Dr. Eggins, I'm speaking. Go ahead. Yes, thanks. I was going to let him to sit down, please. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, we were at Cummings, and you had the choir, and the eighth grade choir, and it's a beautiful choir. And I remember this young lady during Christmas that she sang, Oh, Holy Night. So beautiful. Even today, up to this day, every Christmas, holidays, I remember that song that you had at that choir way back in our uh, Cummins Middle School days. I don't, can't remember the name of the, of the student, but I understand, according to Mr. Manzano, that she went on to sing professionally. But uh, I do remember that child, and every Christmas I remember that song. I wish we had more of those type of programs in the district where some of these beautiful songs are, are performed in some of our assemblies. Thank you, sir, and congratulations, sir. Thank you. May we get a picture with you? Can, 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 we, can, we have a, can we have the honor to take a picture with, with, with yes. Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan and, and, and uh, come up to the board? And the principal so we can of come the up. school, if, uh, if, she, if she can come up along with the committee members, if some of them are here. Can he come here to and Mrs. Here? Buchanan, okay. behind every good man is a great woman. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. They work together as a team always. without expecting anything in return. Thank you for the process. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent work. Yes.
Thank you, Lisa. No, we get, no, he's going to come over here for the picture? No, 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 Mr. Lee. Oh, are we going down? <coughs> down, down, you're going okay. down. Okay, oh, he wants to take, no, he wants to give him a Okay, lots of pictures, Mr. Lee. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good, you're good. I had to follow that guy and make sure you keep him on a leash. <laughs> make sure he's steady. When is the building? They, have they turned in the substantially completed test? Okay. Okay, we now go to item number 11, discussion consideration possible action for reorganization of the Board of Trustees officers including President, Vice President, Secretary, and Assistant Secretary. This is my item, isn't it, Dr. Montoya? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Madam it President. is, right? The moment we've been waiting for. Well, first of all, I'd like, uh, I'd like to clear a lot of things for the public out there. You know, my phone rang since early, as early as 5 o'clock in the morning. And um, this is something that I chose to do. This is something that, that I asked Dr. Montoya um, to please put on the agenda. I had already thought about it prior, and it's just that, uh, you know, some people were more anxious than I was, I guess. And uh, it was brought up before I even placed it. But I'd like to share a couple of my experiences, and I'm going to tell you why, because I have... I have a, a rough road ahead of me where I need to prepare. I must say and admit to the public that um, I have many challenges. I have a lawsuit that's pending. And I want the public to know that I have a lawsuit pending because, and I'm going to ask counsel to help me explain, a lot of time, adults don't leave their indifferences aside. And I'm also going to clear the air that none of us board members have been arrested by the FBI, like they've said. <laughs> and um, 
You know, I've served with great honor, whether I would be a board member, whether I would be an officer. I serve with passion. And I serve because I know the system. And like some of us have worked in an education system, and it makes it easier to understand and comprehend when you have been within the system. So, you know, people ask me this morning, well, what are you going to do? Are you leaving? No, I'm not leaving. I'm just going to be sitting somewhere else. That's all. And I'm going to have less stress, less worries, such as when you're a board president, you're the one that has to mediate and you have to try to hold everything together. And Mr. Superintendent, who's the lead of the, you know, the engine of the train, tries to say, well, this is going on. And if the school needs to shut down, if something is going on, you usually you get called. I have decided to dedicate myself more to my profession. Um, I have a, I think I have a, a, a year ahead of me that I have to work very hard. Um, especially I have to prepare for a lawsuit that's ahead of me, and I don't want for that to be a, a secret to anybody. I don't. I think that people need to know it because it's taxpayers' dollars. And I'm going to tell you that when I was told that I was getting sued, I wasn't happy. I wasn't pleased because it's taxpayers' dollars that are going to this lawsuit instead of going to our own children's education and their programs. So as I, as I discussed with counsel, you know, I asked that if it was possible that I get sued or that I get excluded because I was excluded from the errors and omissions insurance by my colleagues. There was a vote, and it was voted that I be excluded from being covered. And the individual that's suing me was suing me in my individual capacity, not in my official capacity. Not once have I regretted what I, ha what I have done. Not once have I regretted the way I voted. Because every time I vote, I vote my conscience, I vote the facts. And for those of you people who don't know me, I welcome you to get to know me. I might, I might come across strong, harsh, but deep down inside, I have a heart. Because I mean well. And I'm going to tell you that I'd like for counsel to explain to you a little bit. Because that is one of my challenges I have coming up in 2012. And it's no secret to anybody because we've been challenging that. And my colleagues know that I have to prepare and I have, I have to just be ready for it. Can you explain, please, counsel, how that happened or how that is, or if that it's ever happened anywhere? Uh, y yes, Madam Board President, from our conversation this afternoon, uh, you raised a couple points, one being excluded from a uh, board meeting. And under Texas law, there's only one instance that's been recognized where a trustee can be excluded from a school board meeting, and that's where the trustee has sued uh, the trustee has sued the uh, the board in the district. That's the only uh, instance in Texas law where that's been recognized. Then you're also raising the issue of exclusion from insurance coverage. Uh, when it comes to that, uh, the issue of of insurance coverage really requires that you treat all of your officers and employees equally. You know that in each instance, either the, the a determination is going to be made where there's an investigation, or uh, you provide the coverage and allow the facts of the lawsuit to work itself out. Thank you. And as I said, when I this lawsuit came about because I took an oath, and under that oath, I felt that it was necessary that I took the action that I took. But it's okay. That's a challenge for me, and I will take the challenge. On another note. As your board president, there was a time where there was a letter that was directed to me and through the council, and I'd like to share this with you because these are decisions that I've taken because I care for the interest of the district. It is, it is necessary that we start moving in a different direction and, and that, that we, we believe in accountability, that we're consistent, that we, have, that we physically represent are responsible for what we are doing. Timelines is very important in our system as well. I want you to know that there was an administrator that decided to forward a letter to council and the council was to forward it to me. It says, I hereby agree to defend, hold harmless, and identify 
which was the individual from any and all demands, claims, suits, actions, judgments, expenses, and attorney fees incurred in any legal proceeding currently pending, subsequently hereto brought against the individual in his individual capacity or his official capacity as an employee and as an employee of the district providing the incidents which is or are in basis of any claim or lawsuits arose or does arise in the future while that employee as an employee of the district was acting within the course and scope of BISD employment with the district excluding however those claims or any causes of actions where it is determined by the district trustees that this him committed official misconduct or committed a willful or wrongful act or omission or an act or omission con constituting gross negligence or acted in bad faith with conscious indifferences or reckless disregard and excluding any cost, fees, expenses, or damages that that would be re recoverable or payable under an insurance contract held either by the district or by the employee. A legal defense may be provided through insurance coverage with respect to such matters shall be made through the, through the president of the board. The district and the trustees likewise hereby irrevocably and unconditionally release, acquit, and forever discharge any and all claims, demands, and or causes of any actions of any kind or character which may or may not have occurred in my behalf. You know, when I received this letter, I thought and I discussed it with the attorney, why would anybody want to say that we would have to agree to release this employee knowingly or saying that if in his capacity as an employee he had a, done any misconduct or committed any official misconduct that we would just let him walk away. That was a decision I took very much at heart. And I told the attorney that there was, this was not going to be a condition, that that individual was to just do what he had to do, and that we would take care of it later. You know, I'd like to tell the citizens of this community, this board has, has, has done what is expected to do. The forensic audit was needed. We ask everybody to be patient. It's being worked on. And for an administrator to admit or say that I will leave but with these conditions and I'm not held accountable, what does that tell you? I'm telling you that all I know is that I made the right decision. Whether I got, came on the front page of the Brownsville Herald, many articles, they made me look like I didn't know what I was doing or, or that I had something against the individual personally. I didn't. Never have I had anything personal against any individual. But I know that as of tonight, I think I have to stay focused on what's, what's ahead of me. Like I say, my career is, is, is at a point where it's very demanding. I'll be doing more traveling than what I've been doing in the past two years. I know that my colleagues will do a great job. I will be the voice. I will be on this board. You know, my term is up in 2012. You know, I, I'm looking forward to, to working at it. So now I'm ready, and I leave the public with that from the bottom of my heart. I will continue to serve and serve with great pride, great honor. And now I'm opening up the floor for a nomination of board president. Madam President. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. At this time, I would like to nominate Dr. Enrique Escovedo to take the helm as uh, president for the BISD Board of Trustees. Do I have a second? Nominations for Dr. Escovedo. Do I have a second? Second. Lucy. Are you second by Ms. Longoria. Whoever. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? You're in favor? Abstain. You're abstain? We have one abstain. The vote is 6 1. Congratulations. Now you take the heat seat. Okay. We now go, we'll now go to. Will you let me finish? We'll now go to the seat of the vice president, and I nominate Ms. Lucy Longoria. Do I have a second? second. 
Second by Dr. Saavedra. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We now go to secretary. Madam Let's President. Go ahead, Doc. I'd like to nominate uh, Dr. Cristina Saavedra. Dr. Cristina has a nomination for secretary. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Longoria. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 7-0. Now I need a nomination for assistant secretary. Do I have Madam a nomination? President. Yes, go ahead. I nominate Ms. Kathy Garcia. That nomination is? Assistant secretary. Nomination is for me. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Saavedra. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? I'm abstaining from voting. You're abstaining from voting, sir? Thank you, sir. And you voted how, Dr. I mean, Mr. Colunga? You're abstaining? Ms. Pena? You're voting for or against? For. Okay, so it's two abstain and five four. Motion carries. We now change the seats. So you take the gavel. Thank you. Well, well, I th thank my. I'd like to thank my colleagues. Thank you. I actually feel uh, stressed, nervous, and tense <laughs> already. It's the seat. It's the seat. <laughs> thank you all for your vote of confidence. I'll do my absolute best to to obviously run meetings uh, impartially and and to the best of my ability. So thank you all for for your nomination, vote of confidence, uh, Dr. Montoya. I'd like to pass the floor to you. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, uh, we'd like to briefly uh, recognize the former officers that were on the board. This is a tradition that's been followed, and I'd like to begin with uh, the one that I grabbed first, Dr. Cristina Saavedra, who was the assistant uh, secretary. If you'd please come over here. And Ms. Minerva Pena as Secretary of the Board. Thank you. This is nice. Dr. Enrique Escobedo, uh, Vice President. And lastly, uh, Ms. Presas Garcia, who was the President. Thank you. Well, with that said and done, we move on to item 13. Uh, recommend approval to pay uh, Region 1 Educational Service Center for annual membership fees in the approximate amount of $43,116.81 and cents for the 2011-2012 school year. I'll open the floor for discussion. Discussion from the board, questions or comments? Uh, Laguardia? Yeah, Dr. Montoya, the membership, how does it, for the school year, how does it run, like from December to December or? Oh, Mr. Garcia, I think you had the specific information on that, sir, if you'll explain that. Yes, yes, I do. Um, Dr. Montoya, yes, thank you. Board President, Dr. Montoya, Ms. Longoria, board members. Yes, it actually does run, uh, I have it right here, where it's running from um, 
from December to I guess from December to December. It is based on the ADA average daily attendance of the previous year. So that's why we're using uh, the factor of 45,868.95. And then they charge us uh, 94 cents per ADA, bringing the total up to um, 43,116.81. And uh, just another real quick question, Dr. Montoya. I'm looking at the list of uh, services? services that they provide us. Do we take advantage of all these items that are on here? Yes, we do because we, we use different departments, obviously our curriculum instruction, our administrators, our counselors, a lot of the different departments have gone to training or received training at either Region 1 or consultation type information. And so, so the answer in general is yes. And do you get uh, general legal services support like it mentions here? The uh, Region 1 does have uh, a law firm, I believe it's Eichelbaum, that they have, and, you know, we have been allowed to use them for certain general questions. Okay, now that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the board? Not that motion to approve item 13. I have a, I have a motion second. by Dr. Saavedra, seconded by Mrs. Spaniel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item 16, I recommend approval of payment to architects and contractors, Ms. Longoria. I have a question on um, H-125. I noticed that there's charges for field density. Uh, Dr. Montoya, is this normal? It's kind of like every other day or every day. Dr. Montoya? Uh, Mr. Haynes, I think one of your people can answer that, sir. Mr. Haynes? Thank you, Dr. Montoya. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Dr. Montoya, members of the board, uh, basically the uh, field density that is being done or the company that comes in, especially right now it's uh, PSI, what they do is they do a lot of testing for uh, construction. And some of the testing that is done, is, it's one of them is uh, called uh, soil compacting. They, do, they also do concrete testing. They do structural testing, and do, they also do welding testing. So the question was, if, do they have to do it every day, or, or how long do they do it? At the beginning of any project, uh, whenever they're going to throw a foundation, they have to dig the dirt out or the soil out soil and testing. bring in new soil that's, that's uh, used uh, to make sure that uh, that whatever building you're going to build is going to be able to sustain or, 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 or you know, uh, the foundation will be able uh, to be there. So basically uh, your question or the answer to the question is yes, they do have to come in. Uh, the contractor does bring them in. Every time they throw soil uh, and they compact, they do between six to eight levels of uh, soil. And every time they do throw soil and they compact it, they have to come in and test the soil. So you're talking about eight levels. Uh, sometimes it's one or two or three times a day. Uh, and, and you can keep on going with, you know, your concrete and, and right. all the other materials that, that are being used. Okay. And one more quick question. I noticed on page 126 at the bottom of the invoice uh, terms, it says net 30 days, a service charge of 1.5% which is an annual percentage rate of 18% will be added to all past due accounts. And the invoice, this invoice is dated October 31st and we're just not paying it. So are we going to be penalized? Is it going to be considered past due? At this time, uh, if the board uh, doesn't mind, I would like to call uh, Cesar Garza to answer that question. Mr. Garza. <clears throat> Dr. Escobedo, board members, Dr. Montoya. Uh, no, Ms. Longoria, uh, it's a standard form that they have here on their invoice, but they're aware that we receive their invoices at the end of the month, which in this case was up to the end of October, and we review them in November, and then we place them on the next uh, board meeting the following month, and they get paid after the board approves it. So they know it's uh, usually 45 days after the end of the month that they completed the work. Okay. 
Thank any you. other comments? Thank you, Mr. Garza. Any other comments from the board? If not, I have a motion to provide. Motion. I have a motion by Mrs. Uh, second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. <clears throat> Moving on to item 18, recommend approval of payment of $27,968.87 to Walsh, Anderson, Brownson, Gallego, and Green. I'll open the floor for discussion, Mrs. Longoria. Yes, uh, Dr. Montoya. Um, I would like to know when were these lawsuits filed and why have they been going on for so long? I believe it's been almost like two years and... You know, uh, BISD tax dollars are paying for this, right? Because I don't think uh, ACE is paying for it, as from what I saw the the invoice here. Okay. Dr. Montoya? Uh, I, I, uh, if I may, uh, I think for the questions, I, it may be better to defer it to closed session because the, okay. it, it may involve privileged information in, in order to answer. Okay. Cause we'll, we'll, uh, would that require a motion to, poop, to move it to close, Counselor? Yes. yes. Motion. I have move. Okay. I will have a motion to move Second. item 18 into closed meeting after we finish item after we finish the consent agenda. So I had a motion by Mrs. Presa, seconded by Mrs. Peña. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Moving right along to item 23. Recommend approval of the administration uh, to continue collaboration service agreement with the historic Brazil Museum, Gladys Porter Zoo, Brazil Historic Association. Billman House Museum, Brownsville Museum of Fine Arts, and the Brownsville Barnstormers Flying Museum in the amount not to exceed $103,200 from the uh, budget local maintenance funds. I'll open the floor for discussion. Mrs. Longoria? Yes. <laughs> Lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Montoya, I was noticing here that the Gladys Porter Zoo um, sells or provides <laughs> discounted tickets. And we pay them 48000 for 48000 tickets. However, it's not for a full price ticket. It's a discounted ticket. Is, my, is that correct? No, I think we can get clarification here. Uh, Ms. Langoria, members of the board, uh, Drew uh, Brown. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. President, Dr. Montoya, members of the board, in answer to your question, Ms. Langoria, it was very observant of you to notice that, but the tickets are free. They are free admission. We get 48000 free tickets, and they're delivered to our office, and they're distributed. They're treated just like money. They're numbered. They're distributed to the campuses, and uh, the campuses, they're invaluable to them, but they are free tickets. Well, perhaps may, uh, the agreement should be corrected because it does say discounted tickets yes. instead of full price ticket. Or donation. Yeah. Dr. Montoya, is that a possibility? Uh, yes, we can rewrite that and, and let our legal counsel look at it, and, the, and the, it would occur. Yes. Any other comments or questions from the board? If not, do I have a motion to approve item number 23? Have a Two. motion. Have a motion by Mrs. Spain. Second. Expresso, seconded by Mrs. Spain. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Uh, moving on to closed meeting as pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071 at SEC. Board goes into closed session. To item 18, recommend the pool of payment of $27,968.87 to Walt, Anderson, Brown, Gallegos, and Green. Uh, do I have a motion to approve item 18? Motion to I have a motion for Dr. Second. Saavedra, seconded by Mrs. Spain. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. You. All, all against? I'm against. Okay, the mo uh, Mrs. Longoria and Mrs. Uh, uh, Presas vote against. Everyone else are in favor. Moving on, if there are no objections from the board, I'd like a motion to approve. Items 26, 27, 28, and 29. I have a motion. I have, I have a motion by Mrs. Presa, seconded by Mrs. Peña. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to consultation with attorney. Uh, item, uh, let's see, 32A, discussion and consideration regarding BISD versus HealthSmart. Uh, do I have a motion? I give the motion. As uh, per the uh, directions and uh, the discussion that... Uh, yeah, Council, how would you like that, that, you motion, like that, that motion worded? Well, if I, if I understood uh, uh, what was intended, it would be uh, a motion to dismiss claims by the plaintiff. We have a motion by Mrs. Presa, seconded by Mrs. Longoria. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. All opposed? And for the record, I'd like to oppose because I feel that uh, we have not Mrs. explored Spanian, very I'm important still, I'm still uh, areas. I'll give you the floor in, in a bit. Okay. Uh, the motion passes 4-3 with Saavedra, Longoria, Escobedo, Presas against, 
and the other three, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in favor, and the other three against. Uh, are we done, Mrs. Peña? Okay, yes, with I that gave said, my reason, yes. With that said, we move on to announcements. Uh, Dr. Montoya. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, the only announcements again uh, tomorrow at 1230 <laughs> is the audit committee here in the boardroom. And next Tuesday, a specially called board meeting on December 13th at 530 here in the boardroom. And the, do we have a budget? Budget is the following week? No. Oh, no, no. After the holidays. After the holidays. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That, that's it, sir. Great. Yes, we'll, we'll work on the committees uh, uh, later. Uh, with that said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Oh, boy. I Move think, to uh, adjourn. I think I had a motion by Mrs. Uh, Perez, seconded by Dr. Saavedra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes un unanimously. Have good a night, good night and happy holidays. Merry everybody. Christmas, everyone. To everybody. To everybody.